on and I can know most of you. Uh, I think there are a couple of people that we probably have to introduce ourselves sooner or later. Um, <clears throat> well, hurrah, hurrah for the League of Women Voters of Rhode Island and the League of Women Voters, 100 years plus two months. A um, lot to chat about in this, uh, this meeting, so let's get started. Um, board meeting people, people on the board, will you raise your hands and just kind of, um, you know, give a, okay. <laughs> and um, everyone can see all of us. Okay. So um, <laughs> uh, it is a, it's a, it's a tight agenda. So um, let me start with um, so glad to see everyone. And let's just go back to January of 2020 uh, through a challenging year, a very challenging times we have um, uh, been through and still are. Uh, you remember our meeting was January 6th and that was quite a day. The Electoral College, a certification of the presidential elections, joint session of Congress, and we did not meet that day and it is obvious why. However, starting on 2020, um, our league, as always, began reviewing our prioritized issues. And we were ready in 2020 in January to advocate, to lobby, uh, to educate the public. Um, the issues that we prioritized uh, in January or before uh, in 2020 were, of, of course, voting rights, redistricting, uh, women's health, open meetings, access to public records act. So those statutes, uh, the census, we worked closely with the census. Gun safety was another issue, civic education as well. Mm -hmm. And we also worked on a process to advocate for climate change, which we want to be much more active with this year. Um, we continued in the beginning um, at the state with the state um, legislatures. And in February and March, we worked with the Secretary of State on a bill uh, called the Safe and Healthy Voting in 2020 Act. And we were ready. We were ready to um, advocate on that and to support it, but the bill was not introduced. It did not go into the General Assembly at all. And um, there are reasons. Uh, so we did continue, however, in January and February of 2020 to, end, to um, lobby on and advocate for independent redistricting bills, none passed. So in March, March 1st for me, and probably for a lot of you, we uh, had a shutdown, a shutdown of the, of the world really. Uh, the legislators in Rhode Island went home. Uh, we had um, then been introduced to a quarantine and what it was like and what we were to see in the future. Uh, a quarantine, social distancing, uh, Zooms, all events canceled, but the Zooms, yeah, we know that what that is now and how lucky we are. So we turned to all virtual meetings and our attention turned, guess what, to the elections. Uh, we knew there was going to have to be a lot of changes because of what was coming. And um, we had a presidential primary, our first election. We found a lot of data from that election and helped us to look at the needed changes for September and the November elections. We needed an access to the ballot so people could vote safely, securely, and with fair elections. Okay, so in April, I'm gonna go through this really quickly. Um, the League with many other organizations, good government organizations and the Rhode Island Voter Access Coalition, which is now only in three years, 20 to 25 different organizations in that coalition. And it is mostly for voting rights and ballots. So in April, we focused on the changes that we know needed to happen for the process of safe, secure elections. We pushed for mail ballots. We pushed for in-person early voting. We pushed for polling places to be in the right locations and the numbers. 
and we pushed for drop boxes in every single district. Throughout March to November, very quickly, we worked to confirm needed changes we worked with the Board of Elections. Some of us were on every single Board of Election meeting, Zoom. The Secretary of State, we, we spoke with the governor. We sent letters to the governor and to Secretary of State and to uh, the Board of Elections. Uh, we had press releases. The League um, with the coalitions that we worked with, we worked with the Brennan Center as well. We, I, I told you, attended every boat, uh, board of elections and I was lucky to be on the Secretary of State's task force for, for election um, changes. <clears throat> Excuse me, we continue to push for safe and healthy voting in 2020 with the voting act, that act. Uh, the legislature was not gonna come back. We saw that. So it was obvious we had to pressure others. And we did that. We pressure, pressured the governor for an executive order to make statutory changes in order to have great elections. We pursued litigation, asking the courts to order these changes be made. We organized grassroots push for, for that to make mail ballots applicable, ap I'm sorry, applications available to the public for anyone that is um, on the voting registration group. Um, so we encourage people, we really encourage people to, to uh, use the mail ballots. Uh, continuing with that, um, uh, very quickly in June, there was no action from the state officials on mail ballots, although we had worked for months to, to try to get these changes. So we did, um, we did finally succeed. We went to litigation. Uh, we wanted uh, removing, especially in the beginning, move, removing the notary and witnesses from mail ballots. Um, we had to go to litigation. We moved to the Rhode Island District Court and then appeals. And where did we end up? I think you all probably know, to SCOTUS, the um, Supreme Court of the United States. And there we won. We had success. Uh, with all we fought for, our elections were safe, secure, fair. That's what we did in 2020. Now we're in January and February of 2021. And I'll talk a little bit about what we see as what our priorities are for the League of Women Voters Rhode Island and the National League. So I'll talk about that a little later. And I'd like to introduce Faye Zuckerman right now. And Faye is going to just introduce us to one of the great um, processes that the National League um, has introduced, uh, people-powered fair maps, or PPFM, if I may. People-powered fair maps. Faye? So thank you, Jane, and thank you all for attending. So we're embarking on year people-powered fair maps, but I'm going to look back on year one, and Dixie Sampson is going to look at year and explain year two what's coming up. So uh, for those who are not in the know, People Powered Fair Maps or PPFM is the League of Women Voters national campaign that focuses on redistricting education and policy. It is a C3 and C4 education and advocacy campaign calling for states to create fair legislative districts that ensure people elect the representatives and that representatives do not choose their voters. So our grant is a C3 grant, so it's strictly people about redistricting and gerrymandering. So I just want to stress the importance of this campaign because it's an all hands on deck campaign with um, the hope that a lot of the members will begin to start talking about it, that there'll be a big buzz around fair legislative districts, especially as we enter year two with um, uh, the census coming out and districts being worked on. So all 50 states, all local leagues are all involved in the program, the grants. Um, this is, as I said, the second year of grant and grant money that we received. Um, so I'll just very quickly go over what we did in year one. We laid the groundwork for our role in educating Rhode Islanders about redistricting. 
Some of our successful tactics during the year included um, joining like-minded coalitions, partnering with key organizations, holding meetings on the topic and talking about redistricting at events, forums, voter registrations, you know, et cetera. And we also recruited some volunteers to go out and communicate about the importance of redistricting. Um, a key website you might wanna look at is redrawri.org. And that gives a history of of uh, in Rhode Island, which is a very gerrymandered state. So we really want to begin to work on communicating this information and working with our legislators so we're not manipulating districts. So they win elections, rather we elect them. Um, one key partner, as we mentioned earlier, is the Census Bureau, where we work side by side with them to ensure that everybody in Rhode Island got counted. So we're hoping that the numbers look good and that we hold on to um, a congressman. We don't lose one this year, but it's looking like we may. Um, we also uh, encourage public thought and discussion on the issue through op-eds, newspaper columns, and radio appearances. And our goal in year one was just to create the call to action to get people just engaged and educated about redistricting and with that, I'll close and send it back to Jane and Dixie later on, we'll be talking about her plans for year two. Thank you, Faye. <clears throat> okay, so let's uh, take a look at our local leagues, which are uh, have been so active. It, it's just unbelievable what they can do with um, not a huge amount of members like California or somewhere. So, um, uh, Nina and then Nina Rosamondo is um, our president of our local league, South County. And then Susan Wells is the president of our Newport County League. Liz Head will be third uh, with um, just a quick review of our um, Providence League. And then Susan Escherick, who is the, um, uh, shall we say, the leader. <laughs> of the um, East Bay members at large. They are members at large and um, we can explain that to someone, someone if they're not understanding that, but they just haven't come to, a, a, to be called a local league yet, but very, very active. So you have 10 minutes, the four of you. <laughs> so um, uh, Nina is first. 10 minutes for, for, the whole, for the whole four of you. <laughs> so about two and a half minutes apart, a piece. Nina. Uh, you, uh, Faye, can you unmute her? Okay, let me start okay. over. Yeah. Um, our, a lot of our activities uh, revolved around voter services. Two things. First, voter registration drives. We had them scheduled monthly at the library and then the pandemic intervened. Um, so we improvised a little bit. We uh, participated in National Registration Day uh, in September and I arranged for the Ranging Grannies to do some songs. I think they were more popular than we were, but uh, nonetheless, we were out there. And uh, Kristen also did, uh, I believe, three drives in Charlestown at Recan. And to be honest, we didn't register a lot of people, but we certainly this year answered tons and tons of questions about uh, early voting, about in-person voting, about voting by mail, and so on. And all of that was very rewarded. We also uh, did candidate forums. Uh, we did them via Zoom in Westerly for the town council school and state legislature. And for uh, South Kingston and Narragansett, Elizabeth Shondas and I put together a voter's guide, which was the first voter's guide I gather in many, many years. And um, it was well worth uh, the time, effort and money to do that because we have gotten more compliments and we've actually recruited a number of people They've joined our league because they were so impressed by the voter's guide and want more of that kind of information in their community. The other big thing we do is the Susan B. Wilson Civic Merit Awards. And um, 
And if you don't know what that is, uh, it's an award given, it's a statewide competition for teachers from grades kindergarten through 12 who incorporate civics in innovative ways into their um, teaching. It isn't that they have to teach civics at all. And I, I, if I have time, I really wanted to read um, something about the uh, team of teachers actually who uh, won first prize last year. Um, believe it or not, at a school uh, called the um, Trinity Academy of the Performing Arts in Providence, <clears throat> they won first prize for their civics education efforts. <clears throat> they team uh, teach a class that is uh, civics and government and ethnic studies. Um, and I just want to read this. Uh, the civics education program at Trinity Academy is overseen by a team of experienced and talented teachers who are servant leaders. The team is devoted to civic minded education that empowers groups of people who have been historically oppressed as they seek to become involved in the civic lives of their communities. The program is designed to provide the vocabulary, tools, historic knowledge, and awareness of the cultural capital of the students so that they can understand their civic environment and learn how to advocate for change within it. Um, part of the program and usually the programs that win incorporate some kind of civic engagement. And what was the most touching at the very end of the ceremony we asked last year, it ended up being Zoom. Um, we asked the teachers to make some remarks and one of the teachers from the academy said that he knew he had been successful when one of his students came up and said he had succeeded in getting his parents to register to vote for the very first time. So I think it's a great award and there are some teachers out there who do fabulous things. We also undertook a great project this year. It was designed um, because it was the 100th anniversary year. We actually wrote a column. There was a, a um, committee of people including my husband, whom I have now kind of talked into joining the league. Um, but anyway, um, we wrote an article a month for the Westerly Sun. Um, many of them were on voting. Uh, one was on redistricting. The last one was on redistricting, uh, partnering with the census and so on and so forth. Um, and then we had a whole bunch of pro programs that were canceled. So <laughs> I end on that note, we're hoping to um, reinvent some of them um, via Zoom this year. Thank you, Nina, excellent. And I think Susan Wells is next with the New Newport County League. Susan Wells? Am I um, unmuted? Am I on now? Yes, you are. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, as most leagues, most things, uh, most of our things were canceled. We have a Joan Arnold Civic Participation Award that we give out annually, which has been, we have nominees, but we have not given it because we always have a nice fun party to honor the whoever the winner is. And we're hoping that maybe we can do that in the foreseeable future, maybe like the summer. Um, we, what we did do this year um, was one of the local news, some of the local media groups got together and sponsored candidates forms for all the local candidates in the, um, in, on, on Aquidneck Island. So we participated in that, which was, um, we did the candidates before the primary and after the primary. So that was our main focus this fall was, was working on those forms, doing the questions and providing timers for that. Um, and so hope, and we also had a program about voting integrity that we partnered with the Pell Center at um, Salve Regina and, and um, had, that was also a Zoom, a Zoom program. So we're hoping this spring we can be a little more active and um, have some more programs partnering with Pell and other um, community organizations. And hopefully we can be in person soon. Okay, thank you. Uh, Susan, and uh, next is Liz Head with the Providence League. And we're running a little bit late, so I think we said around two minutes or so. And Liz? Okay, finally, I'm unmuted, I think. Um, 
the Providence League, we had no local elections this year. And our big, one of our big registration drives has been working with the uh, Stephen Hopkins House here in Providence and having a registration drive. Fortunately, sometimes it occurs at the same, same time as the uh, Rhode Island School Design Big Fair uh, in the fall. So our mo most of our voter work was um, ser served, uh, well, we, we provided some help to Rhode Island College because we could not get on campus and, but they could do it locally. So we provided some advice and help to them and some materials. Uh, we also tried to get into a farmer's market <laughs> Uh, Providence Community Library and again were, were uh, had a problem and could not do it. So our voter registration drive was minimal. However, we did hold com uh, conversations. Uh, the next one is coming up, and that one will be on that will be our first one on Zoom, um, which we will have Dr. Michael Fine as a guest and the registration form is on the uh, league website. Uh, you can register, anybody can register for it. And we will run it on Zoom and hopefully I'll run it correctly. Uh, the, the other thing that happened are conversations in March, this three, uh, three conversation series that we hold with Lippitt House Museum uh, got postponed to September and ended up on Zoom. Those all focus on government, governmental issues or social justice. This, this past one was uh, continuing the work of the suffragists who were all mostly very progressive. And we had one on um, social justice, particularly uh, looking at the courts. Um, one on equal pay for, for women, which the suffragists worked on unsuccessfully, unfortunately. And I'm drawing a blank on the first one. <laughs> but um, as far as letting people know about voter registration issues and voting and drop boxes and things like that, um, we have a, we're very fortunate to have Joan Racinas who maintains a huge mailing list and we would send out information on that. We also print four uh, newsletters, the Ligger, the Province Ligger, uh, four, well, four newsletters per year. And in fact, the, uh, the one for February is going out tomorrow morning and we'll have information about the upcoming election, a little bit about the upcoming election, where you can find more information, et cetera, um, and, and about registering for our, our um, conversation on February 11th. And also, uh, uh, we have one member, um, Sarah Gleason, who has written a wonderful report on what's happening in the Providence School Committee, which might be interesting to some of the rest of you too. And that is going to be posted on the website soon. Okay, thank you, Ms. Um, and Susan Escherich <clears throat> with our um, East Bay Community Group. Hi, members at large, also known as MALs, that's us. We're the ones who don't have a specific league that we belong to, but we all belong to the state league. Like, like everybody does in, the, in Rhode Island. Um, so in the East Bay, we have four towns and our main effort last, last spring, we started off with a voter registration drive at the library in January and February. And then in March, of course, we got shut down. So uh, we ended up the year by do, concentrating on forums and we had 11 forums for primaries and, and uh, the general election in the four towns. And we had, I'm not sure how many 
they must have had 11 or 12 people putting them on in the various towns. And they were on Zoom. We, we um, cooperated with the East Bay newspapers who provided the uh, moderator. He's great. The, their uh, managing editor does that. And uh, people from the four towns are Linda Poole and Nancy Fritz and uh, Trish Sylvester and Carolyn Rosenthal and like, Joanne DeVoe and um, Mary Chase, of course, <laughs> and Maureen Gomes Lopez. We had a great crew that turned out and put on those forums. And we've tabulated how many, um, how many hits we got afterward. And I was very impressed because with the Zoom, we had over a thousand views on two of the forums, each of two forums in Bristol and in uh, East Providence. And that's more than we ever got in person. So I'm not sure that even if we get back to normalcy, we may still want to continue doing Zoom, maybe in addition to our, our general meetings. But that was our main, those were our main activities in the fall. And I'll stop because I know we're a little bit late. We need to get going. Okay, thank you, Susan Escherick. Um, you can see that all four groups, the members at large and the three local leagues as well are just doing amazing work. Um, for it, a small group of us, you know, what 130 or 40 our treasurer could tell us, but, um, you know, Rhode Island's small and our membership is, is smaller. So we're really looking for new people to come in and, and be with us and, and, our, and our work. So um, it looks like now we're going to go to the second part of our, um, of our meeting, which is um, opportunities and priorities for 2021. Um, Liz, you have a couple of minutes to, to give the uh, group an idea of what the process is um, for advocacy. Faye, does, um, is she unmuted? Now, now I'm unmuted. <laughs> the first step is developing a position in order to advocate for the league is a true grassroots organization and the membership is what decides on what programs are studies we will start and with sometimes with the idea of reaching a position sometimes with the idea of simply uh, gaining more information but the process is the membership recommends a subject the board either approves it as recommended or not. Um, and the subject should be something that can be addressed by government, governmental action, either at the legislative or the policy level. It is submitted to the appropriate LWV board uh, for a state item would be the state board for a national item, national board and local, local, obviously. Um, the board then reviews the request for a study at a board meeting and either recommends the passage at, the annu at an annual meeting or a convention. Um, and if it is passed, then a st study committee is formed and information gathered, informational meetings are held for members. And studies are, they're often two years in length and not, not just a single year. So it, it, it takes some time to gather the information and then present it. Um, at, uh, the study committee is also responsible for developing a list of questions for the members, such as, uh, I have an example here with the library study that the Providence League did. We, uh, developed a list and the beginning question was, are libraries important? And then we went on to say, in the state funding, should, should a population or the, the tax base of the city or town be considered, et cetera. So we went on and made a bunch of, uh, had a bunch of questions and had a discussion, had discussions 
a couple a couple places. And uh, from those discussions and the opinions of the membership, the study committee then um, can develop a position that goes to the board uh, and is either approved or disapproved. Um, let's see. Um, the best example that I have, the, or the most current one that I have, is the Providence League Library Funding Study, which was concurred with by the state, state board uh, at the state convention. And this means that it is now a state position. Uh, um, anyway, this position basically states that the state funding of libraries, the legal and voters of Rhode Island affirms the crucial niche of libraries. They are repositories of knowledge. They enhance learning at all ages. They serve the communi as community centers. In a world linked to the internet, libraries provide essential computer access for many Rhode Islanders. And it goes on, but when you develop a position, you try and develop one that is general enough so that when specific legislation comes up or specific policy, regulation, et cetera, is, is presented to you by the legislature or the department, the state department or city department or whatever, you can evaluate it vis-a-vis -vis the position and not, and not be stuck with, um, say, if we had said the league says that uh, funding should increase to at least to $10 million or something like that, state funding, uh, that hems you in. So if they say, all right, we'll, get, we'll raise the funding level to $8 million, then you're stuck. So we, we try and develop positions that express the, the feelings of the league membership. Mm -hmm. And it is also possible that, that after studying a, a problem or a concept like affordable housing or something like that, you may have questions of which there is no consensus on. You've just learned a whole bunch of information, but you have been unable to reach a consensus as to where, where say, where affordable housing should go or something of that sort. Okay. So that's the basic, um, that's the basic process. Study, consensus, position. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Liz. And, and that is really important what she's saying too, that, you know, for our program, which is the issues that we can with our local leagues, our state leagues, and we have yeah. to have an issue, a, a, a program that is, of course, okayed by our national league. We're very hierarchical in that, that um, so we can use many of the positions um, that our National League has as well that we may not have, have um, worked on. And studies too, as she said, can go to sometimes two years before we can reach consensus. Um, it's an important part of our program. So um, next, I'm just gonna talk very briefly about the consolidation of voter protection and expansion, <clears throat> excuse me, with the open government. And then some of the uh, some of the lawsuits that we have um, worked on this this um, past year or toward the end of 2020 and 2021. So very quickly, um, obviously our work on um, in 2021 is going to be focusing on again election laws. We had unprecedented changes in um, 2020, as I talked about earlier. So um, most were temporary. The, the um, executive orders and whatever with the Supreme Courts, with the Supreme Court um, and appeals, these were temporary changes. So uh, for our continued 
safe and secure elections. We, um, some of the mail ballot changes have to be uh, reintroduced and put into the statutes, uh, early voting for one. In 2016, 29, I'm sorry, 97% of Rhode Island voters cast ballots in polling places, 30% in mail and in person. Um, in November, on November 3rd, it was for only 40% in polling places. So we've really changed our outlook in terms of mail ballots and the process for mail ballots and how important they are and look at our country. And, and we can only see that. Um, and so to, pre to preserve access to the ballot in, all, in the three modes of voting. So we'll look at um, these permanent changes, notary and witnesses, off the ballot, drop boxes, every district or more if needed and in good places where people can see them. No excuse absentee ballot balloting. And if you remember and you did mail ballots this year, you had to, in, in 2020 elections, you had to choose one of those four choices in terms of why you're using a mail ballot. That's not fair in our opinion. Um, so uh, going on with that, uh, notifying voters of deficiencies, um, uh, postmarked election day accepted by the Board of Elections, uh, machines that sort and open and scan ballots. And we have one of those machines now, they're very expensive, but they are absolutely important to us uh, because that gives us the, the ability, if we have all of these machines that can go through and, and look uh, at the ballot and make sure it's it's correct, then we can do uh, audits afterwards to see how we did with our elections. So very important there. Um, and also um, same day registration. We would like to see same day registration, registration for all our elections. And then again, at the end, risk limiting audits to show that we are doing the right thing when it comes to voting, safe voting and uh, fair voting um, and a late later primary too, because it doesn't give us the, pro the, the picture of Rhode Island as it does in other states. Uh, late primaries are more important. Our primaries have been pretty early on. Okay, so um, just quickly, um, the other things that we have worked on and will work on again, and we've done for, for many, uh, many years in the past, uh, we work very closely with Access Rhode Island, which is a, um, a freedom of information coalition where um, I sit on that board and we uh, work for um, compliance with the Open Meetings Act, um, local, statewide, access to public records, the APRA statute. And then we've worked closely um, with our attorney general. Um, on police transparency and use of force as well, which is something is pretty pertinent now. We have, and to close for me, we have um, two briefs that we have worked with. One is an, an amicus brief on civic education. And in fact, um, that was filed. We've worked on that for about three, well, two months, I would say. Um, I was invited um, for the League of Women Voters Rhode Island to be an, um, a partner in an amicus brief in the case of, do you remember Cook versus Romando, where those 12 students sued the, the governor of Rhode Island, Romando, for civic education in the schools in Rhode Island. And a group of um, persons from the Pillsbury Winthrop Shaw Pittman uh, firm in New York and Columbia University came to us because it was a suit by 12 students in Rhode Island for this and said, would you be on an appeal with us? Because the courts here in Rhode Island could not um, agree with that suit for a very, and I think most of you are, are aware of that suit. If you're not please look it up and, and call me if you need anything. I can send you all of that information or one of us in the league. Um, so that suit, um, the amicus brief for the case of Cook versus Romando uh, on Monday last, February 1st, this February 1st, uh, the amicus brief was filed uh, in that case. 
and probably it will um, come to be. Um, currently, it's in the, the United States Courts of Appeal of the First Circuit. It's an important brief, it really is, and it's going nationally, all states, uh, this, this suit, this appeal for civic education in all the schools across the country. And uh, the league is joined in that. Um, currently, it's before the US Court of Appeals of the First Circuit and is expected to be decided in the spring, this spring, 2021. And then there's just one other brief that we just referred to. Um, they asked us just in the last month uh, for the League of Women Voters of Rhode Island to work with the Campaign Legal Center in DC. Uh, uh, they're asking us to uh, provide another amicus brief pertaining to the Rhode Island Independent and Expenditure Disclosure Statute. So it's a law in Rhode Island that says we want we want access to know who is paying for uh, candidate races and ballot referendum. Where's the money coming from? Not dark money. Let's know what's going on. So that um, is an amicus brief that we're working on now with, um, with jo uh, Common Cause and the Campaign Legal Center in DC. Um, it says it would then confirm the law that we have now because there has been a, a pose, a two, two groups opposing it. Uh, that uh, anything spent more than $1,000 in state elections, including candidate races and ballot referendum, the public has to know. So that's what we're working on and climate change, um, many of the other um, issues that we've talked about and from last year as well. Um, who's up next? So thank you so far. I hope we're doing well and uh, questions in the chat. I hope there are some questions in the chat at this point and we'll get to the questions at the end of uh, our, the, the few things that we're going through next. So I'm gonna introduce um, Dixie uh, Sampson now. She's um, been with us um, for a couple of years. We were introduced to her. She's a very active young woman and she has taken over the People Power Fail, uh, Fair Maps, which is the national organization's um, campaign. So Dixie, can you talk about PPFM? Sure, and I'm sorry, I'm having some video issues. So I'm sticking to audio. Can everybody hear me okay? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're going into year two and Faye has made such a wonderful foundation that I really get to just piggyback off of a lot of it. Um, one of the things though, that um, we want to increase for year two are our media mentions. So um, earlier in this meeting, I know we had um, talked about writing you know, Nina, Nina mentioned writing letters, op-eds and things like that. Um, Faye has um, sent me a wonderful guide and we're gonna publish that, put that on the blog for you guys. It's basically a how to um, get it seen, get it written, get it seen, um, where to send it um, for, for any, for any op-eds or letters that you'd like to write. Um, so we would love to see that. Those definitely um, are some big action items for us. Um, and um, one of the things I would really like to do um, is to start getting PPFM into our virtual forums that we're holding. So if you have, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes to spare in um, a virtual town hall or a virtual forum that you've got planned, please let me know. I would love to, um, to you know, jump in and say a few words there and get some awareness spread um, and, that, and increase that outreach. I would like to do, um, with Black History Month um, for February, I would really like to hold a forum and maybe focus on racial gerrymandering and um, the diversity and communities of interest because um, I think it's really important that that we we highlight and um, the a, a lot of the time the um, excuse me gerrymandering affects minorities um, disproportionately. And I think that's really important to highlight, especially with Black Lives Matter and, and all of this that is, you know, really coming to the light and, and is, is in such, um, such a spotlight these days. Um, so I would like to, to, to do that. If anybody has any um, connections or ideas um, like for guest speakers, uh, whether it's politicians, legislators, any academics or community leaders, I think, um, please let me know. 
um, I think maybe an hour long. Um, and I don't have a date planned for that, but by the end of this month, I would like to do that for PPFM. Um, all right, and that could go hand in hand with civic education. It doesn't have to be completely fair maps. So um, I think that would be a wonderful opportunity as well for us to expand our um, outreach and hopefully diversify some of our membership as well, reach some new, um, some new potential members and engage, engage with those, with uh, folks that of, of different generations, different, different racial groups and um, different communities um, over here in Rhode Island, because we are so diverse. So, all right, um, I'm gonna <laughs> go ahead and pass the baton because I know we're running a little, a little late, but um, again, thank you. <laughs> and it's good to meet everybody. <laughs> Jane, we can't hear you. <laughs> Can you turn her on? I, I can't turn her on. She has to do it herself. Jane, you're muted. Yeah, no, I, I did that. Okay. <laughs> I, you can hear me now? Yes. Sorry, sorry. Kept flickering. Okay, so um, Susan, go ahead. You're going to just list um, some of the other uh, issues that we advocate on, and that will be real quick, and then we'll go to Mary Chase. <laughs> yes. Um, advocacy priorities for this year include the ones you've heard about, and in addition, we'll be working on the civic education. We'll be working on uh, promoting gun safety with our uh, coalitions with the uh, Coalition Against Gun Violence. We'll be working with uh, promoting women's health and safety with the uh, uh, Coalition for Reproductive Freedom that we've worked with for a long time. Mary's been extremely involved with them and very effective as an advocate. And the new thing that we'd like to work on this year is climate change because it's such an important subject right now, but we don't have anybody in the league who's really very um, conversant with that. So if, if any of you who are listening today know anyone who would like to help us advocate for that, we have someone who's kindly offered to uh, track the bills for us and let us know what's happening, but we need somebody with some knowledge to help us evaluate and, and apply our positions to the bills. So, um, we, I wanted to mention that we have two new people who have just joined the advocacy, and that is uh, Kristen Chambers, who will be chasing who will be chasing down the uh, gun bills, and um, Christine Martone, who will also be working with us. And we kind of do it as a collaborative group. We we all work together and we all parcel out the work, so it's not too much for any one person. And then we get together and talk about what we're going to do about the subject. So. It's a very important part of what we do in the league and we need help. So let us know. Susan X, uh, Escher, thank you, perfectly said. We want some new people in and going back to Dixie. <clears throat> that's a campaign, a big campaign from National League to diversity and equity. Um, and Mary Chase, um, uh, would you talk a little bit about what is advocacy because you know a lot about it. Well, uh, thank you, Jane. Um, a lot has actually been said about advocacy uh, in the course of the uh, conversation tonight. Uh, there are a lot of wonderful things that hopefully get your juices going and that you would want to write about, talk about, uh, help track, uh, and so forth. And advocacy work can be such a rewarding experience because you're introduced to all levels of government, as Jane, for example, expressed earlier uh, in, in groups and it increases your understanding of what and who makes up the community. Um, it's also, of course, exciting when your hard work pays off in positive legislation and gives you a really uh, good sense of, of uh, purpose. Um, I'm going to sort of synthesize what I plan to say because we're a little bit short on time and you, uh, you I think, have an idea of the kinds of things we uh, do. Um, but for example, um, there have been a couple of us who are volunteer lobbyists. And so we've been doing most of the writing and so forth for bills and that have appeared at the state house. And for example, um, um, what we, uh, a bill is introduced in at the state house to allow early voting was uh, introduced in the house, for example. 
um, needless to say, a very much a league issue and our position would be in favor. The league lobbyist might write testimony for a hearing on the bill. And when the hearing takes place, um, the lobbyist may either submit the, the testimony in writing or may choose to attend the hearing and give oral testimony. Uh, lobbyists may reach out to league members and any of you, would, we would welcome to write or call your legislators um, or to come to the state house and sign on as individuals, pro or con, either to speak or just to sit in the hearing to show support for uh, the league's positions. Um, and of course, a couple of years ago when the Reproductive Health Care Bill Privacy Act was um, being debated, it was a, a huge thing and people uh, came out to the state houses in huge numbers and, and the um, our, that was part of our of advocacy, of course. Um, the league is, as has also been indicated, uh, has also been indicated tonight, um, may and does join coalitions which broaden its understanding of issues and of course can increase its influence. Um, but it provides a background issue uh, for an issue of uh, the, in the Rhode Island Coalition for Reproductive Freedom, for example, the ACLU has done huge amounts of support of uh, research on all kinds of things, but basically the legal background and which we wouldn't have the resources to do, there just aren't enough of us. Uh, and Planned Parenthood provides uh, all of the, or much of the medical information that again, most of us are lay people on that. And of course, uh, some of you are going to be tracking legislation for us and that is wonderful too, for which we are greatly thankful. So this is sort of what an advocacy, uh, advocacy um, the advocacy do, a group does I urge you all to consider uh, joining it, becoming a volunteer, or even becoming a volunteer lobbyist. Uh, we have many materials to help, uh, and this is what the league is all about. And as has been indicated, we need you. So come hop on the bandwagon and join us. Thank you, Mary. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, so we're at the end and we're doing pretty well with our timing, I think. Um, <laughs> So um, Ann Cohen, who is a, a member of the board, uh, League of Women Voters Board of Directors, um, is going to take any questions for us. And I think um, we're going to look at the chat and then Faye and, I, and um, Ann will um, work on that. So hey, thank you. From, from our membership. Hi, can everybody hear me? Yes. Yes, okay, good. Um, so I, I'm impressed. I'm proud to be part of this organization, listening to all that uh, has been done and is being done. And um, I think it's wonderful. Um, we want to encourage people who are listening. If you have questions, you can either put it in the chat or you can use the reaction button to kind of, you know, do the wave thing. Um, or if things occur to you later on or you're shy to speak up right now, um, you can always get in touch with anyone of anyone who said something that was interesting to you or anyone on the board um, and express your interest or your question. Um, in particular, uh, we'd also love to hear about what sort of programming you might be interested in for the future. Um, you know, Dixie had a great idea on the racial gerrymandering issue. Um, we can bring in speakers, we can have panels, forums, debates, and um, you know, we want to be responsive to membership. So if there are things you'd like to hear about, we'd like to hear from you. Um, and if you're interested in participating more in any of these ideas or in putting forth some ideas as Liz Head was mentioning, um, you can bring things to the board and um, we can take on new issues and we can advocate for all sorts of relevant issues um, as we do. So, Ann, do we have any questions in the chat? I don't see any questions in the chat. Um, but as I say, it's not too late to uh, either write in right now or contact any of us uh, in the future. Yeah, if someone just wants to raise their hand or just um, we can unmute you. 
and it looks as though Sarah, maybe? Sarah? Sarah, Sarah says, Sarah. I'd like to see all the background info on Cook versus Raimondo. What's the best way to get this? That's a good question. Jane, oh, what's the best I'm way to get that? that? Okay, yeah, so um, the yeah. Cook versus Ram Raimondo, uh, want me to do that, Faye? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can okay. you hear me? So yes, the, the Cook vo vo versus Ramondo suit came from 12 and that is on our website as well. You oh, can see all what, of that. That's what I want to know. But yeah. you know, today the Education Committee and the legislature um, had a hearing on uh, a law mm -hmm. uh, to have civic education in all Rhode Island schools. Mm -hmm. And I imagine that was a response to um, having this lawsuit brewing because they want to, Rhode Island is one of 10 States without a requirement for civic education. So I, I, I wanted to testify verbally and I didn't make that clear. So anyway, my test, my, you know, 150 words is wild. But I think that's very exciting that it sort of is both coincidental and um, working. Yeah, it, it may not be as coincidental. As no, I, I mean, like I say, they want to yeah. be. The, it's the, it's the commission for civic education uh, started back about a decade ago with the legislature, nothing happened. Mm -hmm. And then we went, um, several of us went to the, the commission being reinstated uh, last year, sitting there waiting and then nothing happened. So um, there is information and in curricula on civic education, but it's very weak in, in what we're thinking. So you know what, the brief is already out and we'll put that on the website as well. Okay. Look at that because it's um, it's it's enormous amount of information. Jane, and before we run out of time, we do have a couple of questions now. Okay, go ahead, Anne. Um, Marie Hennedy says she would like to uh, advocate, especially for fair redistricting. Who should she be in touch with? Susan Esrich? Um, Susan Esrich would be your person. Yes, thank you. Yes. Thanks, Marie. I'll get in touch with you. Excellent. Louisa Sarah, Boatwright. May I ask oh. if Sarah's interested in, in uh, working on civic ed? Civic ed. Yes, civic ed. <laughs> Definitely. What's, what's your last name, Sarah? Gleason. G-L-E-A-S-O-N. Oh, okay. Do you want my email? Maybe you could uh, text it to her on the chat. It, um, so yeah. we have questions from Louisa Boatwright saying she's very interested in Redraw Rhode Island. Where is the state most gerrymandered? And a second question, it's a good question. When will we hear if Rhode Island has two or one US reps? I don't know. <laughs> um, maybe Faye could uh, talk about the, a little bit about the census because something came out about the census yesterday, uh, just recently about the fact that it's been a little slower and we all know why. Uh, <laughs> you could talk about that Faye for just a few minutes. I know people want to jump on to um, Gina's uh, yeah, sorry. As far as where we're most gerrymandered, maybe Dixie will be able to answer that. Yes, so, um, so. I can I can answer both okay. um, if you don't mind, Dixie. Oh, of course. Um, great. So uh, the second question first. Uh, so Gina Raimondo might be in charge of the census, so we'll see if she <laughs> <laughs> what happens. But uh, they're talking about now maybe the end of April. They keep pushing it back. So. I don't know when we'll, I mean, the easy answer is I don't know, but we'll probably hear sometime in April. And then um, I recommend visiting redrawrhodeisland.org. Uh, Rhode Island, unfortunately, is one of the most gerrymandered states uh, in the nation. And we're, it, it's the way the districts are drawn and we're gerrymandered all, all over. Um, so, I, I couldn't really pick one particular area, but there's a lot of interesting stories on that website about the east side of uh, Providence and the way they manipulated those districts. Um, I think uh, that's all. I was just gonna suggest if you wanna put your emails in the chat, um, I can grab them and then distribute them, but I think we have them from the membership list. And I just want to thank you all. This is really great, and I appreciate you all attending. Okay, um, so it is 7.01 at this point, so uh, we have uh, several 
I think questions in the chat and we will take a look at those. And if um, I think we have just about everyone's email and, and try to get back to you on those. Is that Faye, what we're thinking um, in terms of time? Yeah. Okay, so thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we have, um, I think 30, we had altogether about 32, 33 people 